I'm always looking for all sorts of collaborations, but you know, people within, I think one of the things you have to think about is, is it relevant? Is it in your space? So obviously a great place to start is for me would be for people that are in podcasting uh, or maybe people that do speaking engagements. Uh, you know, do they have a level of influence? So there's a checklist you can use to kind of um, ascertain whether it's a good fit or not. And you know, obviously the no like trust, is this person known? You know, are, how big is their audience? How big is their influence? Are they liked? Are they a good person? Are they, you know, easy to get along with? Are they ethical? You know, uh, can they be trusted? Uh, you know, what kind of um, social proof do they have backing them? Do they have good reviews, testimonials? And so that whole no like trust value equation is very important uh, for actually to be a guest on a podcast, but also to do joint ventures with, with anyone. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the show. Chuck Anderson here, and we have another amazing episode, and especially if you are doing any sort of podcasting as part of your marketing efforts. You could be a podcast host, but more importantly, a podcast guest, getting out there on other shows, getting interviewed anywhere and everywhere that you can. And if that's part of your marketing strategy, and by the way, if it's not, it really should be because podcasts are really a great way to get the word out there. You're really going to love today's episode because we have some really cool uh, things to share with you. And I have an amazing guest. Uh, who is big in the podcasting world and has come up with some ways to make life easier for those of us who are trying to get out there on shows. So please welcome to the show. I have Tony. Uh, oh, my, did I just fuck it up again? Um, that's okay. I got this. Um, Gornacha. Okay. Right. So uh, amazing guest today. I've got Tony Granarcha with me today. I know that I butcher that every time, Tony, but <laughs> you're going to introduce yourself. Um, but Tony G. Rate, maybe Tony G. I'm moving towards Tony, Tony G. G. You know, maybe that's where, you know, my brain uh, needs to go. But Tony, thank you so much for being on the show and uh, uh, everything that you're going to share with us today. So <laughs> I appreciate you being here. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thanks so much. Awesome. Well, I think a great place to start, other than mispronouncing your name, uh, is uh, tell the folks, you know, who you are and what you do. And I think that's a great place to start. Yeah. So um, my name is Tony Guarnaccia, in case everyone, anyone's curious on that one. Uh, and uh, I'm, I've been working a lot in the podcast space, both on the host side and the guest side, to really bring tools with really one mission uh, to make podcasting profitable uh, for both host and guests. And so that's kind of where I'm really focused. And I do that through the marketing and monetization of podcast interviews primarily. Awesome. And so I know you've created some pretty cool tools and, uh, you know, a lot of work in the podcasting industry. And so I know we're going to share those. So, um, you know, what what got you interested in podcasts? Like, where did this journey begin for you? Um, yeah, that's a great question. So it really started with a book tour. Uh, so a lot of times when authors want to launch a book, uh, and I did a book called Small Steps to Big Profits, where I kind of told my entrepreneurial journey from the beginning, uh, which is kind of an interesting story we can get into. Uh, but really, that was kind of the culmination of a lot of the things I learned over the years, working with amazing companies like Google and Ford and ADP, all these amazing companies. And so I took a lot of those stories and put them in this book. And what do you do when you do a, a book tour? You go on the podcast. And what I noticed was I wrote the book for people that either want to grow their business, uh, maybe they're struggling, maybe they need a change. And, and it came out during the time of the pandemic. So there was a lot of uncertainty in the world. And so that was kind of the purpose of uh, Small Steps to Grow Profits or Big Profits, my book. I noticed that the podcast I was on were really, it was the great audience for this book, actually, because the podcasters and the guests were also struggling with these same problems, which is really how do you grow a profitable business? And so that's why I decided to take kind of the larger focus and narrow in on this one niche, which is podcasting, because most podcasters just aren't making any money and neither are the guests. And so that's kind of where I took my concept of the book and framed it specifically for this niche. Awesome. Well, that's a that's a really cool idea. And I think gave you that firsthand experience in, you know, sort of what works 
and what doesn't work in podcasting. And so um, was there any particular thing that you noticed that was missing or was there a particular frustration that either you had or you notice other people had that kind of needed to be addressed? Well, there's really two primary areas. Uh, one is marketing and the second is monetization. So most people don't grow their audience because they don't market themselves. Uh, and one of the greatest ways, of course, with podcasts and podcast interviews in particular is collaborative marketing, you know, where, where the guests and the hosts both so, uh, support each other. You see this a lot in the corporate world where, you know, there's McDonald's, they're launching a new, uh, you know, Happy Meal and they have the latest movie being promoted. That's co-marketing. That's missing from, from podcasting. Uh, and for most small businesses, for that matter. So I wanted to help on that side. Uh, and then kind of the more urgent thing is monetization. Uh, neither hosts or guests know how to monetize, make money off their podcasts. So I, I create a bunch of systems and tools to help people do that. Everything from, you know, personally, I think one of the best ways is through joint ventures, affiliate marketing collaborations, uh, but also through sponsorships. So there's a lot of ways to monetize, uh, but those are two or three that the system that I created addresses. Mm-hmm. So um, what, what is your go-to method of monetization uh, for podcasts? Like if you were to pick all of those areas, and those are great areas, and we work with a lot of those as well, what's your favorite one? What's the one that you would lean towards if, if you had to pick one? Well, it's kind of interesting because with my book, um, I actually delayed the launch of the book. I did the uh, interviews for promoting the book, and I said, you know what? This book is missing one thing. It's missing a case study. Mm. And st- instead of just playing a case study for my clients, because I've had a marketing agency, a consultancy, a training company, and I said, well, why not create my own case study? And so what I did was I purposely, the other reason I picked podcasting, because I wanted to go in an area where I had no connections, I had no kind of experience and kind of start a business and grow it to over seven figures uh, with really nothing. And one of those rules was I also couldn't fund it or use any advertising or anything to that effect. And so I said, you know, okay, how can I actually grow this? Like, what is the one way that would enable me to grow this that anyone could do? And so I thought, okay, what's something that's kind of democratized? I mean, anyone can do it. You don't have to have a lot of experience. You can start small. Uh, you don't have to have the big budget. And there's really one way to do it. And that's through joint ventures. So partnerships, to answer your question, the one way to really grow, that's the easiest and, and really the least expensive is through partnering with others. And what that means is, you know, you support me, uh, maybe I give you a commission for it, you help support the product, you get, you share it with your audience, they got a lot of value from that, and we really help each other grow. And so I think collaborations are really the secret weapon. In fact, when I was in the corporate world working with some of the biggest companies in the world, Google, Ford, General Motors, they actually grew the fastest through partnerships. And it's kind of like the hidden thing that people don't think about, the average small business owner, average podcaster just isn't aware of. Yeah, I mean, so many of the the greatest business success stories from in American history has to do with some sort of partnership or collaboration and the combining of one or more ideas into a new thing, right? And right. I mean, and it's just the story of entrepreneurship. It's it's how it works. So great segue, by the way, into the theme and the topic of our show, which is which is partnership and collaboration. And we we're always looking for ways, you know, here's the how we look at it is, is every time we have someone on our show, what more could we do with this person? Like what, what more, what could we do together that would be bigger and better than the separate pieces that we're doing? And I know you and I have had that conversation. I mean, after all, uh, the tools that you've provided, uh, that you've created are for podcasting as either a guest or a host. I'm a guest and a host. And we know that many of our audience members are as well. Um, But, you know, beyond that, just again, having that mindset of looking for the opportunities to partnership and collaborate. So, so a couple things uh, that I want to ask you about that. Uh, Number one, I think is like, well, I think a great place to start with that is how has partnership and collaboration had an impact on your business? Yeah, it's had a tremendous impact because again, that's kind of really the main way I've been growing it so far. Uh, And and maybe it's in different ways. Maybe someone's offering 
a uh, free version of my software because we have a trial and they can share it their, their audience and if someone upgrades or stays on they get a commission you know maybe it's through a joint uh training maybe it's through speaking engagements i mean every kind of partnership i've tried over the years and in the past it's been very effective so uh going back to kind of my story back when i was in the corporate world the way we launched the Ford Motor Program for dealers, digital advertising, getting Google essentially into Ford was through partnerships. So I did one of the largest, it was a multi hundred million dollar partnership with Google and Ford. And that was all through, it was a big giant joint venture. So like I said, at the highest levels, companies are doing that. Average person just doesn't think about it, average small business owner. And so that's a real shame. So one of the things I'm incorporating into my software is different tools that help make it easier for the average person to do joint ventures. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to joint ventures or partnerships or collaboration, is there any particular model or type of partnership or type of collaboration that you're uh, most actively looking for? Well, I'm always looking for all sorts of collaborations, but you know, people within, I think one of the things you have to think about is, is it relevant? Is it in your space? So obviously a great place to start is for me would be for people that are in podcasting uh, or maybe people that do speaking engagements. Uh, you know, do they have a level of influence? So there's a checklist you can use to kind of um, ascertain whether it's a good fit or not. And you know, obviously the no like trust, is this person known? You know, are, how big is their audience? How big is their influence? Are they liked? Are they a good person? Are they, you know, easy to get along with? Are they ethical? You know, uh, can they be trusted? Uh, you know, what kind of um, social proof do they have backing them? Do they have good reviews, testimonials? And so that whole no like trust value equation is very important uh, for actually to be a guest on a podcast, but also to do joint ventures with, with anyone. Yeah, I love what you just said there. And you know, you listed off so many different aspects of no like, and trust that, that are really important. Um, I know they're important to you. Those same things are also important to me. I know they're important to a lot of the people in our audience. And it reminds me of some of the conversations I've had where people are sometimes held back by that no like, and trust factor. It's like, it's like either I don't know that person well enough, or I'm not willing to take the risk to 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 do that, or um, or I'm not even willing to try because what if that person isn't who they say they're going to be, or um, if it's going to be a waste of my time or whatever. So, you know, what's uh, you know what's your thought on on that in terms of? I mean, obviously, if we don't put it ourselves out there, we're never going to get any partnerships or collaboration. In, Right at all, so we there did, does need to be a willingness to step up to the plate at some point. But you know, what are your thoughts on that in in terms of that willingness to act, even though there's someone new you might not know them right now, but um, but you're still looking for those opportunities. Right now, are you saying from someone that wants to do get joint ventures or do the joint venture with someone? Because it's both. There's a separate answer to well, let, well, let's let's do both. Let's do both. So. Start yeah. with the first one. Yeah. So if I am uh, essentially your, the question is really how do you vet somebody? Yeah. And so when you're vetting somebody, you want to kind of go through that checklist, and that's actually one of the values of of the software I created the the one sheet because it makes it easy to vet someone that from a, from a host perspective. But whether you're a podcast host or not, it's still the same process. So you want to understand where they are in the continuum of of kind of um, one way to put it is their level, your level of influence, you have to look at first. And, and so you can put people in different tiers, you know, some of the very top affiliate marketers and joint venture partners, they want to work with pe other people at that level. And so almost by default, you you probably won't have a good chance to work with them. So you have to kind of start and, and with people and attract people that are where you're at and vice versa. So my first piece of advice is, you know, if you're betting someone, make sure that they're at the same level as you. If they're if they're higher than you and you're doing a JV with them, that's actually a good thing because it will open opportunities for you for them to JV you at some point. Uh, but you always want to kind of be looking at, at your love level or above. If you're seeking a joint venture and you want to promote your product, it's kind of the opposite. You want to kind of always go with people that are, are levels below when you're starting because for them there's not as much risk. Because if you have you know uh, you know five hundred thousand people on your list and 
your JV falls flat and the and the and the offer just doesn't convert and you know they don't fulfill well, that's a huge risk. And so you always have to kind of look at the risk and reward ratio and make sure it's in in the favor for the person you want to work with. Not obviously for you, but really look at it from their perspective first to make sure that's a good deal for them. And then that's where you kind of have to look at. So you want to kind of see both sides of the equation. Now, if I'm seeking joint ventures, uh, you want to start low on the totem pole. But beyond that, you want to kind of have a solution for the no like trust. So what does that mean? Like, and this is one of the things I discussed in one of my trainings actually for, for getting podcast interviews. But no, it's a very kind of abstract term. Like, what does no mean? Well, how are you known? Great way to prove that is what is your own social media following? What is your website? Are you consistent in your imagery? Do you have the same headshot across all the different properties? Uh, that's how you establish your known, really your, what's your following, what's your impact today? You know, liked, you know, how are you like? Well, what kind of stories do you have to tell? Uh, you know, have you been on other podcasts? Have you been on media? You know, what is that like? You know, uh, you know, no like trust, uh, what kind of value are you providing? So what kind of topics and questions can you address? You know, so you want to kind of go through and kind of audit yourself and say, okay, where am I on this continuum and, and what level can I play with? And it's okay if you're not super high up, but you know what you need to work on. Maybe you need to work on your following. Maybe you need a social media presence. Maybe you're really strong on one social media property. Uh, maybe you need to build out a couple more uh, because at the end of the day, so for instance, if you Google my name, you'll probably see the first 300 listings, all positive things, interviews, things of this nature. Um, and so that's how I've worked on it myself. So really kind of looking at yourself and giving yourself at the end of the day, a reputation assessment. What's your personal brand like? That's another way to look about it. Like, what is your personal brand? You build the bigger personal brand, you get bigger opportunities. Yeah, there's so much uh, good stuff in what you just said there. And, uh, you know, and I think, you know, a couple of things. One is you got to start somewhere, right? And so a lot of people are held back because, they're, well, I'm not this or I'm not far enough. or I haven't reached a certain level yet, but you have to start somewhere. And that's how you develop a reputation is by putting yourself out there. So it's okay to be where you're at. And it's, you're, you're only going to have a problem when you're trying to be something you're not or if you're misleading people. Uh, and so just be real and authentic. And I think and just, you know, level up at every opportunity. And I think you'll be fine. But one key thing I really want to point out and reemphasize that you said, which was huge in partnership and collaborations. And that is you said, first, is it a good deal for the other person? So. Um, and I believe that as well. But, you know, let's speak a little bit more about that, because uh, this is huge, because in the world of, you know, LinkedIn outreach and uh, and marketing and sales and all of the and prospecting and all of this, so much of it seems to be, you know, what's in it for me? Like, you know, oh, I have this thing to sell. And the intention is very clear. They just want to make they just want my money. But what you said was, is it a good deal for the other person first? So let let's right. let's let's you know where does that come from? Why what what why is that in so important? Yeah, well, that's a great question. So the way I kind of look at and the way I built this software was really to do th three things: increase your audience, your income, and your impact. And what I've learned over the years is that it's really about your impact and your impact. And another way to put it, kind of a more businessy term, is your value. And so you're the, the at the end of the day, the money you're going to make is going to be relative to the value you bring to this world or the impact you make in the world. So, okay, what does that mean? Well, how do you define value? Well, how many people do you impact? How deeply do you impact them? For how long? Uh, you know, there's a lot of ways to look at that. And so if you take a look at that, that is really at the end of the day how you're going to be prosperous. And so... What does that mean in terms of value? Well, at the end of the day, when someone, there's always an exchange. And so if you look at a sales or marketing funnel, there's an exchange. At the very top of a funnel, there's, like we're doing here, there's an exchange for someone listening to me. So an exchange for their attention for some kind of, um, hopefully they're learning something, right? So I'm giving some sort of knowledge. Uh, and then the next level down is typically exchange of contact information for more valuable contact. And at the end of the day, the exchange is really typically money in exchange for some kind of end result. And that's kind of how you look at value. And so what you want to think about is 
And at every stage, the cost has to be for the audience who you're serving has to be much less than the value. Or kind of put it the other way around, the value you're providing has to be at least, ideally 10x of what it's costing somebody. And so you, your growth at the end of the day, is because nobody's stupid, right? Who wants to buy something and know that they're going to get a bad deal? They always want a value. And the more value you provide relative to the cost, the more win. So the way I look at it, the bigger value you provide, the more impact you're going to have. At the end of the day, the more you're going to help others. And that, in turn, is going to return back to you the more money you're going to make at the end of the day. I love that because it's it just with that mindset and that attitude, it's always looking at how can I benefit that person instead of how can that person benefit me? Now, if you do have that value exchange and that connection, they are going to benefit you, but that's not how you're putting yourself out there. It's how can I benefit others? And it reminds me of one of my early mentors used to say to me all the time, and at first I didn't get it. And, you know, it's come to be a foundational principle in my business. And that is that giver's gain, right? Mm-hmm. And, and it's like, you know, if you, if you, you know, you want to get somewhere, you want to, uh, you know, have whatever level of success, be a giver, uh, you know, and, and that doesn't mean give everything away, but it means give value to the relationships that you have. Be someone that lists, you know, lifts other people up and boost other people up in whatever way that you do that. And, uh, and again, it took me a long time to really get that. But in the world of partnership and collaboration, uh, when you're just, when you're a giver, when you're looking at how can I benefit this other person? And I know in our original conversation, you and I didn't know each other, but we're both givers. Like you're giving to me, I'm giving to you. And it's like, okay, yeah, let's <laughs> obviously let's do more together. And it was so, so easy. And when, when you're surrounded with people like that, uh, it's it's not hard work, right? Um, and so has that been your experience as well? Yeah, it's just much easier when you're working with like-minded people that want to support you and you want to support them. It just, it's grease is the, the skids. Uh, I was actually reading a book today by uh, Miles Monroe, and he was talking about, uh, I'd never thought of it this way, but like um, like a tree, for instance, it gives off fruit. Uh, and, and if you kind of step it back, you have the, the fruit, you have the tree, and then you have the seed. If the seed doesn't give itself over to the, you know, the soil, it's not going to grow into a tree. And if the tree doesn't kind of, you know, so if you kind of extra- extrapolate where that's going, it really grows by giving away. Because the fruit from a tree is really what gets in the land and recycles and becomes a seed. And then, I mean, so, so you actually grow by giving away. And actually, that was foundational to my software company because uh, there's a free version. And so the more people come on it, the more it attracts, the more that can then ultimately be, um, you know, upsold. Uh, so it's kind of like a cycle, but giving as much away. So my intent from the beginning with the software company was to build really awesome tools for a fraction of what you would pay for someone to manually do it. Uh, so you're saving time, effort and money. Amazing. Well, and we're going to make sure that we share all of that with everyone here Uh in a moment. Um, so look, we've we've talked about a lot, you know, a lot of things amazing here uh, with regards to approach to collaboration, partnerships, joint ventures, which everyone in my audience knows that I highly recommend. I mean, heck, it's the theme of my show, but it's so amazing to like get a chance to talk to others who embrace the same values, which is really, really awesome. Um, speaking of values, though, uh, you know, big part of being an entrepreneur is not only growing our businesses, but growing ourselves. And uh, I've been blessed with having, you know, many, many like awesome mentors and guides along the way. And uh, so I always like to ask my guests while I have them here, like who's been the most influential uh, person or the person that you learn the most from that, that maybe others could be inspired by as well? Yeah, so I think it's important to always have some level of mentors uh, and also someone that you're mentoring. So it's always important to have kind of people ahead of you, people you know behind you coming up along. Uh, so I've always tried to do that. And in addition, just in my corporate journey, I was fortunate to work with literally some of the best marketers in the world, like you know people from Ford and Google, ADP, uh, just ridiculous people. Uh, but kind of my most recent mentor was a guy named Alan Weiss. He wrote some of the top business consulting books. He wrote a million dollar consulting, million dollar um, coaching, uh, just very, very successful guy, a little bit older, 
uh, which I like because he's kind of old school and doesn't care. He'll just tell you how he likes. But uh, I got, was fortunate to work with him for a while and also read many of his books. Very, very brilliant guy. And uh, yeah, anytime you surround your people, yourself with people like that is huge. Um, and so I highly recommend his books and his, um, his tutelage. Yeah. Well, um, speaking of books, um, there's so much knowledge and wisdom in books. Books have played a big part of my journey. Uh, and in Latter-day More, uh, audiobooks, I, I, can, I can consume knowledge so much faster with audiobooks. Some people really like to read, but nevertheless, books. Uh, and there's so much content in there. So if there was one book that you recommend that our listeners go out and get and, and make that, you know, put that on their must read list, what would you recommend? Yeah. So I love that question because I actually built that into my system as well. So one of the things I talk about in my trainings and my software is uh, the idea of a flywheel effect. So you get momentum. So a lot of people are like, Hey, I just can't grow my podcast. And so, you know, what will happen is when you grow your audience, your income and your impact, you get a flywheel effect and things go faster and faster. That was really inspired by the book, Good to Great by Jim Collins, one mm. of my absolute most favorite business books, because he just talks about foundational things of how the, the best companies in the world have grown and got to where they are. But like, like I said, one of the key things I took out of that was the idea of momentum and the flywheel effect. Amazing. Um, and Thank you for keeping the streak alive, because I think I was telling you that in almost 40 interviews, no, we've not had anyone mentioned the same book twice, and nobody's mentioned Good to Great yet, so now you're the first, oh, awesome. and now you own it, right? Now nice. you're the... You're the first one that recommend uh, good, great, good to great, and you know that was a book that I read. Gosh, how long ago was it? it might have been like twenty years ago. Yeah. I remember reading it on an airplane. I was going to a conference in Los Angeles, and uh, and then in a, and the person beside me was like, "Hey, what's this book?" And we got in a big conversation, and I know it spread to them. And uh, just an amazing, amazing concept of. And I think you know going back to some of the things that we said about you know being a giver. And being the kind of leader that uh, wants others to succeed versus the kind of leader that wants all the glory for themselves. And, you know, that was really my biggest takeaway from that book. And, you know, and, and then breaking it down, like what were the attributes of that kind of leader? How do they approach leadership? How do they approach building their business? How do they approach relationships with their teams, their partners, their peers, their competitors, their everything. And it was amazing to see the contrast between this leader who's in it for themselves and this leader here who wants to see everyone around him succeed. Yeah. Yeah. No, I loved it. I and mean, there's just so many great takeaways. I'm, I'm inspired to read it again now. <laughs> it's been a right? little while. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And, it, you know, it was a long time ago when I read it, but I mean, it's still, those takeaways are still very, 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 very fresh in my mind and, yeah. and real uh, I haven't talked about it in a long time, but it was really cool to kind of like reminisce about that too. I might have to go read it again now too. So yeah. we'll, we'll start a book club. <laughs> we'll, right. we'll do a, a, a good to great study group. Um, so uh, Tony, thank you so much for those recommendations and uh, just everything that you've shared here today. Uh, I think, you know, um, we would be doing everyone a disservice if we did not share a little bit more about podcast one sheet, the stuff you got going on and how they can find that uh, with you. So, you know, tell the folks a little bit more about that and where they can find it and, and how they can, uh, uh, how they can connect with you afterwards. Sure. Yeah. So my software uh, company is called Castosity, which is behind me. Uh, but the first product we released is for, is called podcast one sheet. And what that does is it takes your messaging basically, which is so important because at the end of the day, you convert people, you persuade people by three things, your audience, uh, your serving, your offer, and then your, your communication, your messaging. You need that to make an impact. And so most people don't have a message that's clear. And so Podcast One Sheet is designed to take that message, make sure it's clear. It's designed to then take that and make it appealing and in, in through what's really, it's almost like a virtual resume. It's like a resume for getting podcast interviews uh, instead of job interviews. Uh, and so it takes your message, puts it in there, and it also has opportunities to collaborate through it. So you can add your offer to it uh, so that the podcaster knows 
what you're promoting and can collaborate with you. So that's really the key uh, three things is focus on how to build your audience and get booked on more podcasts, how to have a message that makes an impact, and then finally how to drive sales from your podcast interviews through your offers. And uh, yeah, so that's that's what I'm doing. Awesome. Well, I love it. And you know, as as a guest, there's obvious uh, value to that because hosts are always going to ask you for your information. And if you already have that compiled in one place and you just send it to them, that's fantastic. As a host, I wish that everybody was on there because one of the challenges with publishing a show is getting your guests to send you all their stuff afterwards. And I've already got all yours. Uh, you and I have been in communication before that, but it's all here on one page, which is amazing. So, um, uh, so Tony, where do where do they find that? How do they get access to that and uh, and find out more? Yeah, so it's really simple. Uh, you go to the website podcastonesheet.com, uh, and when you register, uh, you actually can use a special code. Uh, so if you put Chuck in there, as in Chuck Anderson, if you put in Chuck. I'll actually send you a special gift, uh, an excerpt of one of my courses that goes for over $2,000. So I'm happy to send that in there. And it talks about some of the, the concepts we talked here today. So I think it's a, it's a good fit. Wow, that's extremely generous and uh, love that. And so, so we'll, we'll put all that information here in the show notes when we, uh, when we publish this episode. Uh, we're, we're either on, if you're on YouTube, it's down there in the description. Uh, if you're in the podcast, it'll be in your show notes there. And, uh, Tony, thank you. That's amazing. And, uh, definitely take him up on that because, uh, his stuff is really, really good and, uh, extremely valuable. And I think Tony too, it, it, it speaks to what we were talking about earlier. And that is give value and, uh, and, and, you know, be the kind of leader that helps others succeed. And you, are definitely one of those kinds of leaders. So thank you for all of that. And thank you for being a valued guest on the show today. And as we kind of bring this episode into its conclusion, um, you know, if you were to leave our guests with just one final word of wisdom, piece of advice, uh, what would you say to them? Yeah, so kind of one of the things I learned along the ways, um, and this is applied throughout my life and in every discipline. Um, I used to be a professional violinist, believe it or not, uh, whether it's, you know, you're trying to be healthy, whether you're trying to kind of grow, grow a business. Uh, the one thing I learned is that you have to slow down to speed up and that a lot of times is what propels growth. And so what I mean by that is when I was in music conservatory, um, I used to try to play difficult things. And as a kid, you know, here I am 18, 19 years old. I just want to blow through it. And so my teacher would say, okay, you need to kind of break it down. And, and really, this is also one of the ideas in my book, small steps. You have to break things down to their small steps and slow down a lot of times to speed up. And so when you do that, you're able to play the music much better. But if you apply that to the business, the same idea. So take a moment, step back, come up with a plan and then execute that plan. Don't just rush ahead blindly into something. And that really makes a big difference because one thing that I learned is, is you are where you're at today as a result of the decisions you made in the past. If you kind of rush through decisions, you're going to make mistakes, make, you know, waste time, effort, and money. Uh, so if you slow down, make good decisions, you're going to have greater success in the end. Fantastic words to end this episode on. Tony, thank you so, so much. Uh, this has been awesome. And to our valued listeners, thank you as well. Uh, make sure uh, you go take Tony up on his very generous offer. The link is uh, below this episode. Uh, you're going to get all the access to that there. And uh, in the meantime, keep moving forward in the pursuit of your big vision, your big dream, whatever it is that you're trying to do. And, uh, and so we'll see you back here for the next one. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.